In this video we'll be looking at Pythagoras theorem and how it can be used to calculate the missing sides of a right angle triangle if you have the other two sides. Before starting this video it would be worth looking at the area and perimeter video, especially with regards to finding the area of triangles as this comes up often with this topic. Let's look at how Pythagoras theorem works. Here we've got a right angle triangle whose sides we're going to label A, B and C. The letter C must be placed on the longest side, which is called the hypotenuse. It doesn't really matter which side you place A or B on, but popular convention means that you place A on the smaller of the two remaining sides. Pythagoras theorem states that if I made a square out of side A and side B, like this, then the sum of the area of those two squares would equal the area of the square created by side C, which would be here. This means we can state that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is true with all right angle triangles and is really useful in exam questions where they're used. Let's go into more depth on this by looking at some examples of the two main ways that it can be used in questions. So here we've got two triangles. In the first one, we want to find the hypotenuse. To start the process, let's label the sides to be a B and C. Remember that C is always on the hypotenuse, which is the longest side and opposite the right angle. As we stated previously, we can state that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We can then substitute in the numbers for the variables A and B. So 6 squared plus 8 squared is going to equal C squared. If we calculate the powers of those two numbers, we'd get 36 plus 64 equals c squared. And then we can say that 100 equals c squared. In order to find c, we need to square root both sides. And we'll end up with the square root of 100 equals c. Now this will mean that plus or minus 10 will equal c. However, as we're dealing with the length, we can only use the positive value. Please recognise that this is going to be the case with all lengths, so I won't be using the negative answer in any future solutions of Pythagoras. In the next problem, we have the hypotenuse but are trying to calculate the value of side b. As always, we can state that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But here we want to rearrange this by subtracting a squared from both sides. This will make b squared equals c squared minus a squared. We can now substitute in the values for our a and c variables to get b squared equals 13 squared minus 5 squared, which means that b squared equals 169 minus 25, which therefore means that b squared equals 144. We can now square root both sides and we'll get b equals the square root of 144, which gives us 12. Now in both of these examples, I've used what's called a Pythagorean triple. This means three numbers that when used with the theorem will always give you whole numbers or integers. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12 and 13 are two of these triples, but there's vastly more that can be gained by using multiples of these sets of numbers. For example, 6, 8 and 10. They're often used on non-calculator papers to enable you to use Pythagoras theorem without a calculator. Let's have a look at some more questions using Pythagoras. With these questions, we're being asked to find the value of x, which is a side on a right angle triangle. The first step is always with Pythagoras is to label the sides. In this first example, x is on the hypotenuse. Therefore, that's our c variable in our formula. Our formula was c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I've rearranged it so the c value is on the left hand side to make it easier to read. We can now substitute in our values and variable to show that x squared equals 16 squared plus 11 squared. If we want to use a calculator, I prefer to rearrange them all on the paper and then allow the calculator to do the hard work. So I'm going to square root both sides to get x equals the square root of 16 squared plus 11 squared which I can now enter into a calculator and find that x equals the square root of 377, which is handy to keep if I'm going to use it in a further equation, 
but as I need a decimal answer, I'm going to press SD to get 19.4. So we can say the value of X is 19.4 centimeters. In the second example, the X variable is on one of the shorter sides. So as before, let's label the sides A, B and C. Remember to keep C as the hypotenuse. Again, we can state our formula is C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which can rearrange to suit the example by subtracting B squared from both sides. We're going to get A squared equals C squared minus B squared. We can now substitute in our values and variable with X and get X squared equals 20 squared minus 16 squared. If I square root both sides, I get x equals the square root of 20 squared minus 16 squared. This gives us x equals 12 centimeters. So it was also a multiple of a Pythagorean triple as it gave us an integer or a whole number. Let's have a look at how we can use Pythagoras and some exam style questions. Here, we're being asked to find the volume of this prism. It's a triangular face prism with a right angle triangle at the front and at the back. In order to work out the area of the front face, which we need to find in order to find out the volume, we need to multiply the base times the height and divide it by two. Here we've got the height of 7.5, but we need to calculate the base. As we've got the hypotenuse of the triangle at 9.7 centimeters, we can calculate the base of our triangle. Let's label the sides so as to ensure we're using the formula correctly. As we're finding one of the smaller sides, we can go straight to substituting our values in for rearranged formula of a squared equals 9.7 squared minus 7.5 squared. We can then square root both sides to get a equals the square root of 9.7 squared minus 7.5 squared. If we put this all into the calculator, we're going to get a equals the square root of 946 all over 5. As I'm using this in a further equation, I'm going to leave that on the calculator. I can multiply that by 7.5 and divide it by 2 to get the front triangle's area, and then multiply it by 15 to get the total volume of 346.017. It doesn't ask for a specific degree of accuracy, so I'm going to round it to two decimal places and state that the volume is 347.02 centimeters cubed, because it's a volume. Here, we're told that the size of the TV is taken as a diagonal measurement of the screen. We're asked how the size of this TV would be described to the nearest inch. Let's label the triangle and then substitute in the values for our variables to get C squared equals 18 squared plus 47 squared. Now, if we square root both sides, we're going to get C equals the square root of 18 squared plus 47 squared. We can now enter this all into a calculator to get C, or the hypotenuse, of 50.328.91813. As we're rounding this to the nearest whole number, we describe this as being a 50 inch television. Here we're asked to find the area of an isosceles triangle. As it's an isosceles triangle, I can use Pythagoras to calculate the height by halving the base to create a right angle triangle with the height being on the B side of the triangle. After substituting in for the variables and rearranging the formula, I can state that the height, or our B side, is going to equal the square root of 17 squared minus 10.5 squared, which will give us 13.37. We can then put this into our formula for the area, which we're going to get 21 times 13.37 and divided by 2 which equals 140.38. So we can state that the area is 140.38 centimeters squared. Here, we've been asked to calculate the distance between A and C. There's no direct line for AC, so let's add that first. In order to calculate AC, we'll need to find the length of BC in order to use Pythagoras. So we need to find a way to calculate that. We can do that by drawing a line across from D to form a right angle triangle with a hypotenuse of AD being 10, the side of A being 9, take away 3, which will give us 6. We can rearrange the formula and substitute to get B 
equals the square root of 10 squared minus 6 squared, which gives us 8. Now we know that BC equals 8 and AB equals 9, we can calculate AC as the square root of 9 squared plus 8 squared, which will give us 12.04. As they want the answer to three significant figures and 0 is the third significant figure, we can say that the answer to AC equals 12 centimetres. In this one, we're asked to find the distance between E and F. We're given two sets of coordinates. Here, E is 211 and F is 101. We can map these coordinates across to the axes, so we know that E on the Y axis is 11 and on the X axis is 2. We can say that F on the Y axis is 1 and on the X axis is 10. We can now calculate the triangle formed from these coordinates as 10 on the A side, 8 on the B side of this right angle triangle. We can substitute these values in for our formula as C or EF equals the square root of 10 squared plus 8 squared, which will give us 2 square root 41, or if you press SD, 12.81. So EF is 12.81 units long. In this video, we looked at how to apply Pythagoras theorem to find the missing lengths of the right angle triangles. Remember to label the sides of the triangles with C always being on the hypotenuse or longest side and the one opposite the right angle. Then it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which can always be rearranged to find one of the shorter sides. In the next video, we'll be looking at trigonometry with right angle triangles. I'll see you then.